The Dandenong Ranges in Victoria, Australia are an ancient volcanic complex that features numerous calderas and a mountain range composed of rhyolite and rhyodacite. The story of the Dandenongs begins 360 million years ago, during a period known as the Late Devonian. During this time, a colossal tectonic event was unfolding, the subduction of the Paleo-Pacific Plate beneath the continental landmass of Victoria to the east of the Dandenong Ranges. This event was occurring on the eastern edges of the microcontinent known as Van Dyland, which itself collided with Western Victoria beginning around 430 million years ago. But by this point, Van Dyland was now firmly welded to the crust of ancient Western Victoria, and the Dandenong Ranges, along with the Acheron and Cerberian calderas, to name a few, were the volcanics that took place in the Back Arc Basin of this dramatic tectonic collision. Supervolcanoes tend to form in the Back Arc Basin during tectonic collisions. We made a video on why supervolcanoes form and where, and you can find that video in the description down below. But in general, the occurrence of this is due to the fact that these basins are in an area of crust or thinning, where the crust of the plate is actually being stretched rather than compressed like one would expect during a subduction event. And we see that occurring here. The eruptions at the Dandenongs were extremely explosive, and there are several overlapping calderas that hint to the volatile past this area has experienced. The fuel for the Dandenongs was sourced from the aforementioned subduction zone. Beneath the earth, massive amounts of magma upwelled to the surface. Most of it solidified without ever erupting, but in certain areas like the Dandenong Ranges, the magma made it to the surface. In this zone, the oceanic plate of the Paleo-Pacific Ocean was dense and heavy, and it was forced beneath the continental plate of Van Dyland. This subduction process is not a quiet affair, it's marked by intense seismic and volcanic activity. As the oceanic plate was pushed deeper into the Earth's mantle, it began to melt due to the high temperatures and pressures of the mantle. This melting created magma, a molten rock rich in gases and minerals. In this back arc setting, a series of explosive volcanic eruptions occurred, shaping what we now know as the Dandenong Ranges. These were not your typical effusive lava flow eruptions, but highly explosive events, given away by the rhyolitic and acidic composition of the rocks in the region. Rhyolite, dacite and rhyodacite are all high silica felsic rocks, and they are known for producing extremely viscous magma. This viscosity combined with trapped gases creates a volatile mix that, when released, results in highly explosive eruptions. Each major eruption would have seen the ejection of vast quantities of ash, pumice and volcanic gases, creating widespread tephra deposits. The force of these eruptions was so immense that it led to the collapse of the magma chambers underneath, forming calderas. These are large crater-like depressions, a hallmark of powerful volcanic eruptions. Though messy, magnetic surveys of the area reveal the presence of several overlapping calderas, indicating that the Dandenong Ranges were shaped by multiple significant volcanic events. Following these cataclysmic eruptions, the Dandenongs entered a long period of quiescence. Over the ensuing millions of years, the forces of erosion began to act upon these volcanic landscapes. Wind, water and chemical weathering gradually wore down the jagged peaks and filled in the valleys. The result of this erosion led to the Dandenong Ranges that we see today. Erosion worked down the surrounding sedimentary rocks around the calderas whilst the erosion-resistant rhyolite held strong. The calderas of the Dandenong Ranges eventually became mountainous as the land around it got eroded away. The rhyolitic rocks, resistant yet not impervious to erosion, also tell a story of this transformation. Rhyolite weathers to form soils that, while not as fertile as those derived from basaltic lavas, still support a diverse ecosystem, contributing to the rich biodiversity of the region. In more recent times, during the Miocene between 23 to 5 million years ago, basaltic eruptions occurred. The magma that fueled it utilized the conduits created by these ancient subduction events to ascend. To the south of the Dandenongs, we can see the massive batholith sized intrusive magma that never made it to the surface to erupt. This would have been the fuel source for the eruptions that occurred here. And boy, are they enormous in size. This goes to show just how much magma pulls up in back arc basins, and if it's allowed to penetrate and work its way to the surface, it's no wonder that it results in supervolcanic scale eruptions. Now, there were several massive batholiths that were generated during the late Devonian. Some of them contained occurrences of tin. But the batholith that fueled the Dandenongs appears devoid of any interesting minerals, although hydrothermal fractures within the volcanic rock may contain trace quantities of gold. The Dandenong goldfields were a thing in the mid-1800s, but very little has been written about it aside from an article or two documenting the fact that the Dandenongs were indeed worked for gold during the gold rushes here. And to its west, in the Warrandyke goldfields, intrusive magma was worked and did contain gold. It's highly likely that the Warrandyke goldfields were re-enriched during the late Devonian volcanism, as felsic dikes were mined for gold. The tin that was discovered in nearby batholiths appears in pegmatites, which are the end stages of magma crystallization. 
But to summarise the story of the Dandenong Rangers, from their inception in a dramatic tectonic theatre to their current state is a vivid chapter in Victoria's geological history. It reminds us that the landscapes we see and experience today are but a snapshot in the ever-evolving saga of our planet. Thanks for watching.